We'll call the meeting to order. I have 8.30. Okay. Please rise for the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, Thank you for attending today. Uh, next thing on the agenda is public comments. Do we have anybody on Zoom? Okay. Public comments, Ethan, Chad. Oh, okay. We'll go to that. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes from the last meeting? Move to approve. Second. Mr. Chairman, I'd yes. just like to comment on uh, the minutes under number, number 14. Um, it says that Supervisor Nelson will work with Mary Ann Miller Corporate Council to draft up a resolution addressing the sturgeon issue and bring it back to the legislative committee. Mm -hmm. What I heard, and not that this is incorrect, but the way I understood it was to get a resolution and get it to the county board. So that's what we did. It did get passed. It's kind of a timely thing. I didn't mean to undermine the authority of this committee oh, in sir. doing that. I yeah. that's what I understood my mission to be in never drafted a resolution before, so it was um, glad it went through and that it was passed, and, but no, you know, it be never right. disrespect. Yeah. yeah, it's all going to work out just fine. I think. Okay. Thank you. So, there's no changes to the minutes. No, all in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Opposed, hearing none, the motion carries unanimously. Who was the second Hey, right? I the Update from our state legislators. I see we have <laughs> one here. Thanks for commenting. Absolutely. I have uh, a question before you do yeah. the update. Uh, the session of this legislature has ended. When do you meet again? So session is done unless we are called back in for some special business that would need to be called. Other than that, the session is done. We don't come back until after the election this fall. So we have between February 23rd when it ended, all the way to January 2nd. Okay, so what we're passing now, what we're going to forward, uh, obviously, to reach it, just the staff. Where does this go once we send it from the county? Did you guys just sit on and take it up in January then? or That's probably what would happen. Okay, if just a little time. Act, <laughs> though this is a great time, actually, to contact your representatives because of the fact that you were able to build your case now, especially if there's some intricacies in some of the policy that we're trying to push on the state level. Mm -hmm. We have time now to really look at that and kind of teed up for next session. So whether whether it is someone in this room or someone uh, obviously next session, if it's someone new, at least you have done some of, the, some of that groundwork for it. So that would be the, the best situation possible. So don't have to be resubmitted. What we do during this summer and the early fall is all going to be addressed at some point. Hopefully in January if the bill is drafted. Correct. If, if you have a, a representative that's coming back, that's in the loop on what's happening, they shouldn't have that torching to keep going with it. Now, if it's someone brand new or whatever in the area may be, I would suggest just resending them in probably early January just to put it back on their radar. So, um, with, thank you. You yeah, have the floor for the update. Absolutely. Time. So, uh, session ended as we were just talking about February 23rd. Uh, with that being said, we 
got a lot of good things done. Uh, obviously, the biggest one that we've all probably seen, both on the local and county level, is the shared revenue uh, increases that we've talked about in the past. Um, with that, there's been some, uh, we mentioned the redistricting the last time in January, we ended up actually taking up and voting on Governor Evers' maps. Uh, with that being said, also we have the 55th district. So my district is drawn down now through Winnebago County, uh, Winnebago County, through Amaro, all the way down to the town of Utica, Black Wolf, and High Line, and Southern parts of Oshkosh. That district also loses the city of Mina, town of Mina. Um, with that, uh, obviously, if, if you haven't heard it yet, uh, Michael Shaw and I will be running in a primary for August 13th. Uh, so you'll, you'll, you'll be bombarded with, with all of our uh, good information about why, why we're the better candidates. So um, it's been a, definitely an honor and a privilege to serve in the first term that I've been able to serve. And I hopefully uh, look forward to serve another term and represent a lot of Winnebago County uh, in this next session. So any questions for me? Mr. Schrock, good morning, sir. <laughs> um, you're up, if you would. All right. So uh, our legislative session ended um, a couple of weeks ago. Um, our last week, we ended up passing um, 200 bills in the assembly. Um, in my opinion, it's done by design. Um, when you have 200 bills, it's a lot harder to go through and read through every single bill. And um, so there's always a rush from representatives to get their bills <clears throat> heard. Um, if they haven't had a committee hearing yet, there's a rush to have that committee hearing um, to get it exact and then to get it on the floor. So that's why um, many times the last, um, in, in all the sessions that I participated in, the last week of session is always uh, chaos. Um, that being said, um, you know, a number of good things uh, happened and um, uh, the, the Senate ended up, I think, uh, I, I think they only passed a couple dozen of the actual bills that we ended up passing in the assembly. So um, there were not a lot of, uh, a lot of the bills just died because they didn't get, um, they didn't get passed in the Senate. Um, the governor had been signing bills. Um, I was down uh, last Wednesday um, and had a bill signing, uh, call it the CESA bill. So we had uh, a bill earlier in the session uh, during the budget that gave $50 million to um, the school districts to increase literacy. And there are certain trainers um, that can actually teach that. And so our bill uh, changed and allowed CESAs and the CESA 6 in Oshkosh is very active. Um, I think it's one of the most active CESAs in the region. Um, every month when they have a meeting, there's probably um, 10 legislators there and probably 40 administrators from uh, Winnie County, Nina, um, everybody that's in that CESA 6 district, Amro, uh, Wapan, Oshkosh. So we got that bill passed uh, this week. On Wednesday, the governor will be signing two more of my bills. Uh, one of them is, a, uh, we call it the psychosis bill. Um, uh, I, I led that with um, Senator um, Rachel Cabrera, Cabrera and RCG, we call her. Um, and that bill basically trains correction officers how to identify psychosis. Um, one of the reasons why I did it is uh, had a heartbreaking story of a lady come in uh, that said that her daughter died while in the segregated unit in Milwaukee County Jail. And um, she was obviously in a, a psychotic episode. Um, the guards gave her a diaper because she, you know, was just kind of going anywhere. And she ended up ingesting that diaper and she ended up dying. 
um, if those guys would have been trained in how to identify uh, psychotic behavior and somebody that's in active psychosis, uh, that girl would probably still be alive today. Um, so that bill passed, and then I had a number of bills, um, criminal justice reform bills. Um, one of them we call the reentry bill. So when an individual gets out of prison, um, they have to go and get an ID. They have to go and get uh, get signed up for health care somewhere. They have to open a bank account. Um, they have to see their probation officer. Uh, they have to meet with somebody to try to find a job. And what was happening, we had an individual come in that actually um, uh, was incarcerated for 20 years and he was released. And he just said, shut your eyes once and just uh, imagine how you would feel getting out, um, probably not having to deal with cell phones and computers. And then you got to go on one side of the town to meet your probation officer. You have to go on another side of town and so you're traveling all over and it's overwhelming. And um, obviously we want the lowest recidivism rate as possible. We want these guys to succeed after they've served their sentence. And so this individual um, had a concept that everything would be in one location, in one building, and it would be a lot easier instead of that guy having to get on the bus and go across the road and miss his PO appointment. And so uh, we passed that bill and it passed unanimously in the uh, assembly and in the Senate and the governor signed that bill also. Would that um, be the courthouse? What's that? Would that be the courthouse? No, uh, the, the bill is going to be a pilot program for the uh, Milwaukee County. We're starting down there. We'd like to see this all over the state, but we wanna make sure that um, it was $2 million set aside in the budget um, in the reserve comps um, to uh, fund this thing. And we're basically going to be um, partnering with um, uh, a nonprofit um, that can go off for RFP. And somebody will have that all set up, whether they own the building, whether they rent the building, and all these different rooms then will be associated with all the silos that I just talked about um, that need to be taken care of. So um, we're really hopeful that, you know, it's it's going to keep individuals because the, the number of individuals that uh, violate probation is just enormous. There's 65 to 66,000 people that are out on extended supervision or probation. We have close to 23,000 that are incarcerated. So um, when you have a minor violation when you're on probation, and that could be um, not being around anybody that is drinking alcohol, and you walk into uh, you know your house and somebody is there having a beer um, that you didn't give them any authority to do, you'd be in violation of your extended supervision and could be thrown back into the county jail you have a hearing, and if they determine that it was blatant, you go back to prison. And the whole reason for this, and the reason for another one of my um, criminal uh, criminal justice reform bills, is we are packed in our prisons. Um, I think our last meeting was in January, and I talked about the $13 an hour raise for correctional officers. And it's definitely had a huge impact. When, when you go um, and, and want to become a correctional officer, you go to uh, the academy, it's called for seven weeks. And typically there were 20 or 30 people that would attend the academy. And uh, three and a half, four weeks ago, we had 214 people graduate from the academy. And another academy started two weeks ago and there are 220 individuals that are participating in that. So tenfold of what normally um, uh, attends an academy. And, and that, we relate that. And DOC has 750 applications that they still have to process. So we attribute that to the $33 an hour starting wage. It was $20 an hour, and that's what I fought for four or five years to, uh, to get increased. And uh, it does have a pretty big fiscal. Um, it's a $345 million fiscal a year. Uh, but 
every year DOC spends, I think this last year we spent almost $90,000 on overtime. And not to mention that, um, guys were burning out and uh, they might only have 10, 12 years in and they weren't seeing their family. The divorce rate was skyrocketing because they would work an eight hour shift, they get jammed into another eight hour shift. So they work 16 hours, they go home and sleep for four, five, six, seven hours, come back, work an eight hour shift and get jammed for another eight hour shift. So they were working two 16s in a row a lot of times. And um, overtime was massive. Um, it was killing families and all the guys want a little bit of overtime, but when you start, you know, working 70 hours a week, 60 to 70 hours a week, it starts taking a toll on your body and on your family. So um, the raise definitely helped. Um, did that, you, you, yeah, yeah okay, sure. that answered your question. Um, so I'll yeah. have a follow-up question, hopefully you're fine. Inviting a committee might also, but uh, it's a little different subject. As, as Nate mentioned, and I brought this in for anybody to look at, so um, there were a lot of what we call pairings um, in the assembly. Um, and you set were, that maybe right in front of you and then uh, just lean it up against the table. That'd be great. Thank you. So, everybody see that? <laughs> and, you, and people can go up to it, look at the borders uh, if you want. And it looks like somebody else has a. It looks like somebody like man. printed them off. You just do that? Jody did it. Yeah. Yeah. Hold well on. Thank you. So, in the assembly, there were 30 Republicans that were paired against each other and four Democrats. Um, and with the four Democrats that were paired, um, one of them is retiring and one of them is running for the state Senate. Uh, in the assembly, 30 of us were paired. So they drew Nate's district 15 feet in some, I call it my district. Um, my district number went from my current district up to the city of Nina, which Nate represented with Nina and Fox Crossing. So they split that all up. And when you're paired, you have three options. Um, you can retire because you're basically, you got two, and in some cases there's three either senators or assembly people in the same district. So you have to sit down, talk it through, you either retire, you move, or you run against each other in a primary. Um, I uh, still have a little bit more that I want to get finished. Um, when I came into this, um, I wanted to be very similar to um, our founding fathers and you come in with a business background and you serve for a few years and then you go back to the business world. And um, I was ready to do that. And the speaker came to us because we knew that this was the new maps were gonna be pretty devastating. And he asked all the incumbents um, to consider running at least for another term or two. Uh, the projection with Evers map, so right now the assembly has 64 members and all the projections show that we're going to lose 10 to 12 members in the assembly uh, on the Republican side. Um, so we're going to come back with 52, 53, maybe 54 in the majority. Um, that is going to even out the assembly. It's going to be, you know, we had a 14 seat majority. Now we're going to maybe have anywhere from a, a two, three or four seat majority. Certainly would be veto proof on that. Um, the, yeah, you're not going to be able to veto uh, any of the governors. And it was tough for us now. We needed to have um, two Democrats not show up and all of our members show up. <coughs> the Senate did have a, 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 a majority of the vetoable, veto, uh, vetoable majority. So in two years, the Senate's going to be gone. Um, it will no longer be under Republican um, dominion as it has been for 14 years. Uh, the way that, uh, the, and I'll, I'll just simply call it gerrymandered maps. If you look at the maps, um, the other side blamed us for gerrymandering. And if you look at what they did with these maps, drawing Nate 15 feet into my district, um, this was over and over and over again that they did this, and they paired young representatives, first or second term, with seasoned legislators. 
And that, in my opinion, was totally done for a reason. But the press isn't talking about how badly uh, these maps are gerrymandered, and they won't. So I'm just going to say it out loud. They're terribly gerrymandered. Um, but they're bringing the numbers closer together, and that's not necessarily a bad thing in a divided government when you have a Democrat um, or a governor, you've got both houses controlled by, by one party. Um, and when we had the, I call it the trifecta when Walker was in, you know, we passed a lot of, a lot of bills and they weren't necessarily bipartisan. Um, so maps changed significantly. And um, my uh, Nate and I met and had coffee and discussed what we were going to do. I'm not moving from my house. I added on and built, uh, you know, uh, a whole addition on my <laughs> farmhouse in in the country, and I'm I'm not moving from there. Um, and so we, you know, looked at it, and I wasn't quite ready to retire. And so there will be a primary, unfortunately, because, um, you know, I consider Nate a, uh, uh, a good legislator, um, but one of us are going to win and one of us are going to lose. And um, it's 43% Nate's district. So just the new 55th is 43% Nate's old district, 40% my old district, and then 17% came from Lori Palmieri. Um, from the city of Oshkosh, which I kind of consider that my district because it borders uh, a lot of my district and my I have name recognition. So um, we're going to duke it out and, um, you know, the best man will win. And it's unfortunate because this is going on all over. We're losing a lot of institutional knowledge. Speaker Voss, very, it very likely could not, may not be coming back our most senior um, person with experience. Our second most senior person is uh, Tyler August, who's the majority leader. He's gonna be involved in a really tough primary with another freshman. Um, no guarantees that he comes back. And already we've had three or four of our colleagues um, that have been in for a while that know the system. Um, they've worked with stakeholders, they've worked with agencies. They know how things operate and it takes a good two, three, four years to really understand the whole process of how government works and, and how the different agencies work. So um, we're going to be losing a lot of institutional knowledge and that's one of the reasons why I decided and I can tell you right now I'd much rather be home with my grandchildren, um, spending time with my business and my wife and chopping wood um, because this was my sixth term. Um, I've been in for 12 years. And to me, that was probably close to being, you know, done. There are some more things I, I still want to get uh, raises for the other part of the correctional, um, for corrections, the food service, the nurses, the teachers um, that did not get any raises. And then I'm also uh, fighting PBM reform. Uh, and trying to lower prescription drug costs by, um, uh, and I've worked on that for the last four or five years. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm fired up. Um, Nate is a great campaigner, and he, um, the good thing about having a primary is the district really benefits. Um, a lot of doors are going to be knocked on, and, um, you know, like I said, the best man is going to win. And it's it's only good for for the district. We may not like it initially because we're going to have to spend a crap ton of money, but um, you know, it, to me, it's not a bad thing. And I've been talking quite a long time, so I will. Uh, I have a lot more to talk about, but I'll pass it off to other people. And if people have questions, I'll I can stay afterwards a little bit. Well, when you pass off too, so are there any questions for me or? Representative Shaw on the committee. Hearing none, I guess we'll move on. Thank you for your thoughts and comments, both of you, gentlemen. Uh, update from the federal representatives. I don't believe we have anybody here unless we have somebody on Zoom. Uh, okay, communication shared by committee members. Uh, 
One thing that's absent on the agenda is the chairman's report. We'll try to get that added here as we go forward. So under communications, uh, let me uh, address a couple of things. First of all, we have Chairman Egan with us. Uh, all this time, the rules. Sorry, I'm late, but I read one of the old ones that says nine o'clock on this year. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there was an amended one that went on. Oh, well, one of these uh, anyways, uh, Chairman Egan is a actually a member of the committee and a voting member. You know, he's always sat in the back, so uh, we're certainly doing our best to correct that. And that is per County Rule twenty four point five. If you want to look it up. Uh, the other thing is, I think we'll take a minute, uh, it's okay with you, Tom, to do a little presentation. You want to do it now? Sure. Uh, that'd be fine. We have a member with us, I believe, that served on the county board for 38 years and is retiring, so we certainly would like to recognize that at this point in time. He wasn't able to be with us uh, at our last meeting, which most of you know that illness that hit him, which hits a lot of people now, but uh, David has been with the board for ever since um, 1986. He's been chairman of a lot of committees. He's been on a lot of different committees. Uh, he's chairman of the board. He's kind of been in every seat I guess there was so far. And he's he's not only represents us here, but he represents us on different state and county um, things. So David, we really appreciate you. We're going to miss your knowledge. As they're saying back there, some more knowledge that's going to be leaving the seat, but hopefully, as I said to you before, hopefully you remain and stay active in the Very county. Good. So, we're going to stay set. Congratulations. You. Thank you. Thank you, it's really appreciated. We're all gonna miss you, Dave. I guess that kind of sums it up, you know. So not a lot of time. We certainly have enjoyed working with you and that it would be around like a bad penny. What's that? Around like a bad penny. Right, a bad penny. Well that's good. That's fine. Back to the English. Uh, okay, is there anything else from committee members they would like to share? Hearing none, we'll move on to updates by the county executive or his executive assistant. Ethan, you have the floor. Yeah, so the only thing we had on the agenda was just to make everybody aware of what the new maps look like that got signed. I passed those out. Um, we are going from two senators to three senators in the county. Uh, Senator Fine will no longer represent the county. He's running in the new 20th, which goes from Fond du Lac kind of south to West Bend. Uh, but we are adding the 13th Senate district in the town of Nipiskin. Uh, which is represented by now Alex Dolan. It will be Alex Dolan is the current representative for that district. And the state senator is John Jagler, uh, who's from Watertown. So that district goes from Watertown all the way uh, to Berwyn. Uh, the other districts in front of you, you see the 19th district, uh, which is kind of the, currently the Nina Menasha Nina Appleton Senate district, goes far west. That actually goes to the central part of the state, uh, way on the other side of Wapaka. Uh, it's a very rural district. Um, and then the 18th Senate district is the Nina Oshkosh Appleton. There is no incumbent senator in that district. So that is an open, will be an open seat. Um, then you can see the assembly. The purple uh, in the town of Poygan and town of Rushford is Speaker Pro Tem uh, Kevin Peterson, who lives in Wapaka. I think about 10 years ago, he represented Wolf River at one point, or he did represent part of the county early in his term. So you may know him, um, but yeah, I think he had Wolf River like 10 years ago. Uh, and then you, they talk about the 55th, the 54th, uh, obviously to take some of Inland, or no, none of Inland, Nina, town of Oshkosh and town of Nina, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and so that's uh, Representative Wolf Mary's district. Uh, 
Uh, he's picking up half an in uh, them and they're all right? Yeah, I said I'm using control. Just yeah. the, the east side. I where you live. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. Gander. I'm on the other side. No, of he's, on the, he's, he's on the town. That'd town be right Ray Vanley's side then. Okay. Turn down and come away. That was along Winnebago. Yeah. And the A going up. Long yeah. Lake. And then um, does does Lee live in the current fifty third? No, she no, doesn't. That's an open seat, she right? Yeah, so there'll be a new representative completely in the fifty third because she lives on the other side and she lives on the county next side of Nashua. Um, the other big news from districts: the congressional maps were not challenged, um, but as of April, well, we don't know yet. He may go earlier. Uh, in the middle of April, Mike Gallagher will not represent. He has resigned. He will be resigning from Congress. Uh, and so we, there will be the governor can call a special election. We don't know if he will. He's not required to, um, but that will be an open seat. The, those maps are unchanged. So the north part of the county is uh, Congressman Gallagher's in the rural part, and then the cities, and then the south part is Congressman Grothman. Those are unchanged. But for Congressman Gallagher over the weekend, announced he's resigning. Uh, he was retiring, and now he's resigning sometime in April. Uh, I think he said the 19th because if he does it before the 19th, then he does have to be replaced. Yeah. No, it's the second Tuesday, so he's got to be out of. He's not. This has happened in the past. If there's there's some differing, if he's got to leave office or just give his notice. Uh, when Congressman Grossman resigned, this was a part of the the issue. Is when they had to. Could the governor call a special election based on the resignation day, or does he have to wait to leave office? That's been a debate since Tom Tiffany. It happened when Tom Tiffany retired or um, ran, so that was Duffy's resignation. Grossman's resignation from the state senate has a similar law when he was elected, and then now this one. So the governor hasn't given any indication, but by law he would be forced to if there was a vacancy by April second, the second Tuesday or first Tuesday. Uh, and then, if not, it, there's a 70-day rule. There's federal law. Um, if you remember the Tom Tiffany resignation, when Tom Tiffany ran for the Duffy resignation, remember they had to call two special elections because the governor didn't follow federal law. There's a 100-day requirement between the primary uh, for UACABA for military voters. So he's got to hit that, and it becomes goofy. So congressional resignations are goofy because you got to follow federal law and um, sometimes we don't have enough time in our primaries. So the governor made that mistake when Duffy resigned and had to recall this election. Um, we have heard. But yes, the 19th is the current date. So you're just going to let it bake on time? He resigned Saturday so or Friday, so we'll see if the governor tries to call one or what they try to do. Okay. I suspect they may call, he may call one, but um, I don't know. A lot of things going on. Yep. So we just want to make sure that you all knew that the maps have changed pretty significantly in Winnebago County. Um, there will be, you'll hear news of ward splitting and all that stuff. The, the uh, LTSB, Legislative Technology Services Bureau, gave those to the Elections Commission about a week and a half ago. So there's some wards. So check your wards too uh, if you live in Oshkosh. And Manash, I think, had the most splits, but Oshkosh had a bunch of splits. Uh, so probably been on to a little more work for the clerks, right? It lets the wards line up. If the yeah. wards line up, they'll be okay. And then it's more work for the county clerk because the county clerk actually designs the ballots. So when there's these districts amongst competing areas, um, the ballot styles or designs is the county clerk's job. Uh, and then the machines have to be coded correctly, and that's the county clerk's job. Um, it's worse if there's a school district involved. So the fall, uh, if there's a special with a, there's a special election in the spring is usually when ballot styles get into um, counties can a county like this uh, have over 100 ballot styles if there are a special election in, in the in the spring with the school districts added. Uh, but that's all the county clerk stuff. Thank you, Ethan. Yep. Appreciate it. Any questions for Ethan? Okay. Sorry, none. Uh, we'll move on, I believe. Would our district attorney have any comments 
Okay, good, Jan here. I don't think I have anything to do, but I'll be around if anybody has something they want to talk about. All right, thank you. Okay, H is done. Business items. We only have one thing before us, and that is the referred resolution from Sawyer County that was referred back to Land Conservation Committee. They looked at it, addressed it, and are now bringing it back. Uh, to clarify, uh, on your agenda item report, and I think, I assume, Ethan, you're the one that drafted that. Chair Mack. Uh, certainly, thank you for that. And we have a resolution from Winnebago County addressing the same subject matter. However, that was not uh, addressed by the committee, the LCC committee. So we will not be taking that up today. We're only going to be looking at the resolution from Sawyer County, which is what the committee referred back. Uh, I suspect at a future date, of course, I don't know what the makeup of the committees will be next term, but I would request that maybe Chad put that on his bookmark that on your computer. So maybe uh, the new form LCC committee can address that in May. And I'm referring to the county resolution regarding the waivers. So we have the referred resolution before us. Uh, I'll accept the motion. Okay. The motion to approve. We have a motion to approve and a second discussion. And I might add uh, during discussion, I would like to call on Supervisor Nelson or Chairman of Land and Water uh, Chad. If either one of you would like to make some comments, that would be fine. I would suggest that Chad give us his comments and take first and Go ahead, Will. Okay. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Um, so I will refer back to the Land Conservation Committee, and I did a little research on wave pools in general and the damage that they do. So uh, most of you are probably already aware with these boats, they build the ballast tank with water to create weight in the boat, to create a weight behind it. People serve behind these boats and they, they create about a four to five foot wave so people can serve behind these boats. The problem with that is it not only creates a, a, a weight that can do damage to the shorelines, but the prop also pushes that water down and it stirs up the bottom of the lakes and, and destroys the habitat in these lakes. And the third thing would be um, the tanks themselves, if you don't adequately clean them, you can get um, aquatic invasive species in those tanks that can get transferred to different lakes across the state. So some of the research that I did um, just looked at our uh, Wisconsin Lakes group. They have a wake committee. Um, the St. Anthony's Falls uh, through UW University of Minnesota, they did some studies and a couple other ones that I looked at. At the end of the day, the average recommendation was to be at least 500 to 700 feet from the shoreline. To avoid the shoreline erosion and the study showed anywhere from 20 feet deep to 30 feet deep that you need to be in that deep of water or deeper to avoid the prop damage to the bottom of the lakes is what i had uh, researched so that kind of mimics with sawyer county what uh, the resolution was um, that was the research that we did that was connected to the thank you chad any questions for chad uh -huh. uh, you have one Mr. Cox, Supervisor Cox. I read this thing about 15 different ways, and I understand <clears throat> why you need to stay away from the docks and the additional boating that's going on out in the water to be safe and whatever. Why has nobody thought of special permits for these ballast boats as they're being sold so that they can be tracked and that additional money can go into a copper for the rework that needs to be done for the lakes that they're tearing up with these ballast boats. 
ballast, water ballast isn't a new thing with these boats. Uh, sailboats for a long time have used ballast, you know, ballast, uh, water ballast in their design. And <clears throat> they work fine until you realize that you take water out and you put water back in. And people don't seem to understand the invasive species problems that they're creating. So therefore, I would suggest that you set up some kind of an arrangement that all ballast boats, all water ballast boats, be permitted to be able to drop water or pick water up from the lake. And they have to then have certain procedures done so that they keep the water that they brought in the, brought from one lake in, put back into that lake rather than taking it to another lake and then disposing it. All of those kind of things are questions in my mind. Yeah, I think it's a good suggestion. I mean, at a minimum, it could be educational for both to have the bulls to make them understand the damage that they do and the additional fees. I think it's a good suggestion. I know hybrid vehicles, it's more to get your registration renewed for a hybrid vehicle. So if there were a bolt like that, I don't know if it would be through the NR, where they could maybe generate some additional funds to register these types of bolts. I mean, yeah, it's good ideas. Well, on top of that, it would seem that there could be penalties that could be attached if, you know, they're you know, disposing of their water in, improperly, or they're you know, doing other things and damaging the wildlife or damaging the, you know, the structure of the lake in some way. But it would seem to me that there should be more teeth in our resolution so that it would accommodate you know, the renewing of the lake bottom or the disposal of the water in the wrong places and that sort of thing. I know some of the lakes, like Green Lake, they have a washing station where they have to have the bowls go through its high temperature water clean in the balance systems. I mean that's for all lake or all bowls with balanced water, but it is it's expensive and it'd be a big undertaking for the side of the lakes you have but you could get Thank you, Supervisor Cox. Supervisor Nelson. And just either add to Chad or or um, several things to look at. Um, of course, the safety of you're out there. The big thing now is everybody wants to be in a kayak and they can even go fishing with kayaks and so forth. Well, you're gonna you better have a good flotation device and figure out how to get back into the kayak. The algae, I belong to a little Facebook group voting on Lake Winnebago, and it's almost humorous, but not funny. Every time it's coming up to a nice weekend, everybody is trying to ask which beach or which sandbar has the least algae, depending on which way the wind is blowing. Well, the algae comes from all the phosphorus in the system, Land and water, we are spending literally millions to get farmers to put in cover crops and to put in shoreline control and trying to fix all of that. There's 50 years of phosphorus laying in the bottom of the lake. Um, these wake boats have the ability or whatever to drive that water down and stir the mud up up to 17 feet down from what I understand watching the videos and and so forth. Well, if you're stirring things up at 17 feet, you are just releasing all the phosphorus that's been laying there for years. It's kind of like running a manure spreader right down the middle of the lake because now the algae has all the nutrients it needs to grow and blossom and turn into blue green algae that'll kill the ducks and dogs and everything else not to mention 
did we actually get all the PCBs out of Lake Butamore or mm -hmm. did we dredge forever and then say it's good because most of it's all covered up now? Well, do we want to go into Little Lake Butamore and stir up and find out for real whether it's all completely buried, not to even mention the invasive species. Nobody's saying you can't water ski, you can't tube, you can go out there and enjoy it, but um, to allow a very small percentage of people to literally destroy what we've all been working to protect, um, just Obviously, I'm very passionate about it, and it just, I just think we have to move forward unless the state wants to move forward and, and get her done. But it sounds like that is another year away. And um, I just think before it gets going strong and more people have these votes, I think we need to at least set the parameters and everything I see in here that makes sense to me is 500 feet and 20 feet. And to Supervisors Cox's idea, I think it would be counterproductive to say, hey, you got to wait for it. You got to pay a thousand dollars a year for your registration. And then you're allowed to go out there and destroy a bunch of stuff because now we got a thousand dollars to try to fix what you destroy. So um, I just think we need a resolution and hopefully it gets passed by the county. And if the state wants to follow our lead and, and pass the same thing statewide, that would make me even happier. Thank you for your comments. Mr. Weatherham. Um, Chad, back up for just a second. I have a couple questions for you. Um, I know in, in our resolution, we're saying we're asking for local control. Lake Winnebago is a huge lake with um, what four counties that, that bordered, I believe. Who has jurisdiction where, as far as that goes? And then also, as far as the 20 foot depth, we know there's not that much in Lake Winnebago. And how is that going to be monitored? Who's going to be controlling for that if something like this were to go through? I know you're not going to have all the answers, but these are questions you need to ask before it goes to them. Sure. I, I know obviously the depth thing is going to be the biggest issue. It's going to be very limited on these lakes. But as far as the, the if you create an ordinance, it's each individual town. You can correct me if I'm wrong. You can have the research that the county has authority over rivers and streams, towns and cities and villages have authority over lakes. So the Winnebago County can only regulate uh, the Fox and the Wolf Rivers, basically town of Monroe, town of Wolf River. When it comes to Lake Winnebago, the law requires 60% of the shoreline to be under an ordinance before it's enforceable. And then you have to determine kind of where it is. So the county couldn't really do anything here, which is why the Sawyer County Resolution preserves local control. We, what we did is with the resolution that was drafted was all we did was took Sawyer County and said, okay, what does it mean for Winnebago County? And that's what the whereas is. So it's largely the same, except for really specific to the Winnebago County system, because Sawyer County does have bigger lakes, um, not obviously not Winnebago, but fully in their jurisdiction in one in one town. They have bigger acreage wise uh, and they have deeper lakes. So we, we did is we just put a resolution. If Winnebago County were to pass the same resolution, Sawyer, in our terms, under our rules, will look like that's what, what you have. Um, but to answer your question, Lake Winnebago, there would be no ordinance that could put in effect and without state law or without 60% uh, of the shoreline being covered, should be every individual town and city around there passing that. Um, for the other upland lakes, a uh, town of Winnebago County could control all of Lake Winnebago County. Um, Town of Amro and Town of Winnebago County would be close to controlling uh, Butamore, but you would have Town of Amro and Town of Algoma, or Town of Ashcash and Town of Algoma, those four. And then Poygan, there's two well, Washer County towns, plus both River and Poygan. Well, River and Poygan probably have enough to enforce it on. Yeah, 
Thanks for that. But it, uh, what I'm concerned about is who's going to monitor that 20 foot area in the, that's just out in the middle. There is no area. There is no 20 foot area in the under the resolution 5520 would ban it in the entire system. Okay. That, that makes it work. Thank you, Mr. Ant. Any other comments? Mr. Bender. I would agree with Supervisor Nelson. I, I think it'd be best just to ban it in Winnebago County. I mean, if they want to do that, go to Green Lake, it's deep there. And our fishing is, is basically a big industry here and tourism. And to basically let the wake waters come in and stir up the phosphorus. I couldn't imagine even the fish, when you create a wake that big, what it must do down. You know, so it's like for a very small percentage of the people that would enjoy it, we're going to take away a lot from the people that basically want to fish and use it for a sport. So I think the best we can do is, is just basically get it for its band. Any other comment? Uh, I'll offer a comment if I might here. Uh, as I look at the resolution, first of all, the intent is to bring this uh, to the attention of our legislators. It also is to address bills that have already been introduced, and that is uh, Assembly Bill 656 and Senate Bill 680. The Sawyer County resolution kind of gets to the meat of the issue on line 18. So we're looking for a state law to be passed that would, would enable counties to draft their own local ordinance adopted under that state law, giving us the authority and control to regulate within the parameters of state law, uh, our lakes. So I, I think this is kind of, you know, addressing the current bill that was introduced, which is obviously quite supportive of the industry and the lobbyists that represent that industry. We're saying, uh, let's get a state law passed that will give us some local authority. And I think the parallel resolution I referred to from this county drafted by Ethan will address the same issue. So let's get a primary state law, local control to enforce it, and we should have the ability to enhance that control. And then maybe we can get something done. Those are my comments. Any other comments from the committee? Yes, sir. In your package, uh, there is a, a statement from uh, Vermont, the state of Vermont, and the idea that uh, they kind of point out uh, three designated zones at least 500 feet from the shore, uh, 20 feet uh, uh, or greater in depth, uh, Lake Forge Band, and 770 lakes in Vermont. Uh, at least a 50 acre box that uh, is 500 feet from shore and 20 foot in depth. It just, as I said before, there, there are ways to add some teeth, more or less, by permitting. And when you buy a boat, you get a, per, get a permit. Or when you are found doing damage, you get a fine in some way or another. Now, by doing some way, writing some of that into your resolution, it would, it would I think, help. Uh, I don't know who you, unless it was the DNR or, or uh, people that uh, would normally go out on the lake and, and cruise the lake for you know, drinking and whatever else as the police do. You're referring to the pending county resolution, one of Eagle County resolution. I think stiffening our resolution so that it doesn't. Okay, not the Sawyer Creek. 
Uh, yeah, and I think that's probably something we should be brought forward in May. Uh, hopefully, we can get something on the books to follow up with Sawyer. Give her our Mr. Schrock. Um, the only thing I would add is uh, that bill was introduced by um, Senator Felskowski and Rob Swearingen in the Assembly. And it had seven co sponsors in the Assembly and only four co sponsors in the Senate. Mm -hmm. um, it was uh, referred to committee November 9th of last year. And what committee? Uh, Committee on Forestry, Parks, and Outdoor Rec, which is uh, MRSA. Um, but with only, and out of the seven, um, we got Swearingen, Plummer, Spiros, Whitkey, and Dolman. There's five Republicans. Um, Sinicki and Snodgrass were the, the two Democrats, so there wasn't a lot of support, um, you know, just based on the co-sponsorship going well. And then in the Senate, um, you've got Felskowski, Nas, Royce, and Teston. So there were three Republicans and and one uh, Democratic senator, but it didn't even get a hearing. So, well, I would hope our focus would be that the new representative of uh, District Fifty Five would support. Perhaps a new bill. I'll work with Doug when I come back. Thank you. Don't take that one at all in the building. No, uh, no. Swears in reported he never got more call. This is the bill he got the most calls in his career on. So he they introduced a second bill to do a uh, study to get some unit assistance and study. And even that bill got more calls. So his constituents stayed even allowing it. So they, I think it was I think. Project. Any other discussion, gentlemen, before I call for the vote? Hearing now, we have a motion on the floor to approve, and a second to that. Obviously, the motion to approve would be sending it to the full county board. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All those? Hearing none, the motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Uh, I believe we're going to go to items for the next agenda. Normally, we kind of leave that up to uh, what's presented to the county clerks from other counties. I did reference a resolution that hopefully the new LCC committee will take up in May, so that might be on the next agenda. Anything else, gentlemen? Agenda items? Hearing none, we will move on to agenda item K. Uh, that's the next meeting date. Uh, generally, it will be scheduled for May 27th. That is subject to the makeup. At that time, I put, we can probably schedule May 27th up. At that time, we'll have a new committee form and elect new officers. Uh, the next thing is L. That's a motion to it. Yes. So May 25th is Memorial Day. That's oh, I didn't even look at yeah. that. So yeah, right. you may want to <laughs> move it to yeah, the oh, Okay, let's take a look at the calendars here. <coughs> Sorry. Okay. Yeah, that's the next meeting. 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 Yeah, County board tour. That's what it usually is. Uh, How about Tuesday the 28th? Would that work? The day after Memorial Day? Or we could do maybe the Friday before. What about the next Monday? Uh, that would be June 3rd. Because there's not going to be a whole lot to report legislatively. Because you've got, you've got it right now. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I'm all for June 3rd. June 3rd is on the table, gentlemen. How does that work? Fine. Okay, we'll schedule it for June 3rd. Uh, form a new committee and officers and go for there. 
from there. We have that down, I believe. Thank you. The next thing is a motion to adjourn. A motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Very none. Opposition, we are adjourned, and I really thank everybody for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you. So thank you. Still working hard.